What's up guys, this episode I want to talk about debugging and specifically reading and interpreting the stack trace in your Ruby program. So anytime that you have an error, you get the error message up here. So you get this, you get the class name of the error, and you get this giant blob of text that is the stack trace. And so the, all these lines that you see right here are the stack trace, and those are actually far, far more important than you might expect. So I wanted to talk about this because a lot of people will send errors on Stack Overflow or to me via email or on Slack or whatever, and they will just grab this part at the top. And so they will just grab the message in the class and say, hey, I got this error, how can you fix this? And that is never enough information, or it's rarely enough information to understand exactly what is going on. And so you need to also include the stack trace here. And so this, if we looked at this error, we'd see no method error and we added something to a symbol, probably, and we don't really understand, you know, what was it trying to add, what was the symbol, or any of this stuff, and we don't really understand what was the intent of uh, the code because we just get this error that's very, very vague. And we know that we can't add things to symbols and so we're trying to figure out, well, why was it trying to add something to a symbol in the first place? So then let's take a look at our stack trace here. Now, this first line here starts with action pack 3.2.8, which actually tells us which Rails version or which version of action pack that we were using. So if we wanted to, we could look into um, that on GitHub and we could find the code for this. And so the next piece here shows us what file it is. It's lib action controller metal data streaming .rb. And then a colon and 125, and 125 is the line number for that in a method called send file headers bang. And so this is telling us that inside of this gem version 3.2.8, we ran this file on line 125, we were in this function, and this is where our code crashed. So this top line is always where the code crashed. So we know then that the code actually crashed inside of Rails and Action Pack, and it wasn't actually our code, which is interesting. That tells us that we probably gave Rails some bad method parameters, and we passed in information that didn't work. And so then Rails didn't know what to do with it and just blew up and gave us an error. So that tells us then that we should probably look for the last line of code that we wrote to figure out what we passed into Rails and maybe what we did wrong. So if we go to app controllers, charges controller, this line here we can see is one that we wrote because it's in app controllers and it's not in a gem as we can see. There's no uh, gem name and version at the beginning. And so this is the line of code that we last ran before it blew up in Rails. And we can see here in charges controller line 13, Inside a block um, in show, that is where uh, it crashed last running our code. So let's take a look at that code. Now this is line number 13. Uh, I've split it up on multiple lines, but we call send data, which is a Rails method that you can pass in some content and then it will give a uh, file in the browser back so you can have it set up something like this to render out a PDF and then give it a name and then a type so it knows that it's a PDF and then you can do disposition inline or attachment I believe so that you can either have the PDF rendered in the browser or force downloaded by the browser and so this is our helpful method in order to help send that PDF down. Now, this uh, we can assume was working pretty well because it actually called this method. So we know that this charge receipt render was correct. We also know that this charge ID um, ran, and so it would have given a file name and some sort of uh, rendered receipt to the method because it crashed inside. So if this was to error out, we would actually see a different error that we would actually understand probably a little bit more. So we didn't really do anything with adding to symbols here. So we know that it really wasn't our code that went wrong. And really the only symbol that we passed in was this disposition inline. So maybe that has something to do with it. So we don't really understand what's wrong with our code. It seems like we passed in everything correctly. So then the logical next step is let's take a look at the send data method 
and check out the docs and see what it says and make sure that we're passing in the proper content and the file name and the type and the disposition. Make sure that that's all correct. So if we take a look at action controller data streaming, the send data method here, we can click on that and see the docs here. And this is gonna tell us basically how it works. And the only thing that we notice is that disposition is a string here and we're passing in a symbol. Now Ruby generally treats symbols and strings as exactly the same and um, because this code was pulled from a screencast of mine, we know that the symbol version of it did work. So we can kind of assume that, well, yeah, they used a string here, but a symbol should still work. So there's something else going wrong um, and none of the other stuff really tells us what's wrong. So we have, we know that we're passing in content um, and the type is being set and we're setting the file name. So this doesn't really help us out too much, but it does maybe hint at something maybe wrong with the disposition. Like for example, maybe they're not allowing symbols. Um, and we know that if we look at this code, that we're using Rails 3.2.8. So if we wanted to, we can then dive into this line of code and check out the file at line 125 and figure out what's going on there inside of the send file headers method. So that's the next step. So the easy way to do this is to open up the Rails repository on GitHub and then open up the proper tag for your Rails version. Now, unfortunately, this is an old Rails app. So if we look in the tag section, they have a tag for every single release that they've made, except they only have tags going back to 4.0. So they don't have one for 3.2, unfortunately. And if we look at branches, we do, uh, we do get a 3.2 stable, so we can click on that and this will pull up the code um, for the very most recent version of 3.2. So this is what we're gonna look at and we need to go into action pack because we know that's where it ran. Lib, action controller, metal, data streaming. And so this is the file, lib, action controller, metal, data streaming. And we're looking for line 125 inside which should be inside the send file headers method so let's go down to line 125 highlight that and weirdly it's inside of a comment so chances are this code has changed a bit because this is not referencing real code and of course our code could not crash inside of a comment so chances are this has been modified um, between our version of 3.2.8 and the latest version of 3.2 that we're reading here now, if we look a little bit further down, we see that send file headers method. And so this is like 11 lines of code off. And that's gonna tell us, well, you know, they're probably adding um, some different pieces up above, which pushed our send file headers method down. And I'm not really sure where this is gonna be, but we can pay attention to this and just kind of read through it and see what it's doing. It's taking some options, and those are appear to be the options that we passed in. So here it's looking for type and disposition, and as you noticed, we passed in file name, type, and disposition. And so it's kind of reading those and saying, well, if you passed in type, um, options required, it will raise an error or whatever. I don't really care, that doesn't seem to be adding to a symbol. And if we look through this, the next part we see is, well, it is adding um, to the disposition here, except it's converting that disposition to a string, which is what we expected, because in my code, it was converting the symbol properly in the screencast that this code was taken from, and um, this option's disposition is converted to a string, so this addition should work successfully. But this kind of points out that we're using an older version of Rails, and maybe it wasn't always converting to a string. So the thing that you can use here is the blame method in Git, and blame is going to then show you which commit is responsible for the code that you see in the file currently. And so if we go back down to this, and we look for that line of code here where we uh, convert it to a string, we can click on that and see that five years ago, um, this was added to accept symbols as send data disposition value, and that's pretty cool. So we know when this function got added to accept symbols, and we can see here that the test accepted a disposition as a symbol, 
and it's testing all of that. But notice here that our Rails version that that was released on is 3.2.10. And so this tells us now that we are using an outdated version of Rails, which is actually not supporting that symbol version of the uh, disposition. So that's pretty interesting. So what's really interesting about this is that the stack trace tells you a story of what happened. And by looking at the last line of code that we ran, we can take a look at that, make sure it looks correct, and then we can take a look at what the gem was trying to do. In our case, it was the Rails action pack gem. And we can look at that code and say, well, what is it trying to do? And did we pass in the correct information? And when it looked like we did, we could use git blame to figure out, well, what were they trying to do? And we can see here that while well, the send disposition um, as a symbol is now added in 3.2, which we stumbled into, and we never would have known had we not looked at the source code of Rails to figure that out. So it's really interesting to see that. So anytime that you get an error in Ruby, you will now know that this error and the message are not really the most important thing. You need to understand them and say, well, it was blowing up in this kind of way, but you're trying to figure out where that came from, and the way to do that is to read the story of your code, which is the stack trace. So anytime that you ask someone else for help, make sure that you include the entire stack trace so that they can look at it and ask you questions. So that's about it. Debugging and reading your stack trace isn't as daunting as you might think it is, but you always need that information to properly walk through what happened and figure out what's wrong. And so this is a quick process that you can go through in pretty much any language. And so if you read the error message is number one, you wanna make sure that you have an understanding of what it was doing. Then number two, you can look at the last line of code that you wrote and make sure that your code was correct. You can fix anything there that might solve the problem. But in our case, our code looked correct. So we could assume that we should look at number three, the source code of the library. And here it tells us the line number and everything. So we can go look at that and look inside that send file headers method and figure out inside the library, what does it actually do and what does it expect from us and we can figure out our error there. Now, because we happen to have been looking at newer source code than what was actually being used, we can tell then that symbols are allowed now, but they weren't previously. And so our solution is then we upgrade Rails, but your solution for whatever errors you run into may be that, oh, I didn't pass in my arguments correctly or something like that. And the stack trace is going to tell you all of those things that are wrong and where you can go to look for that stuff. So the stack trace is incredibly important and anytime you ask for help from somebody, you should include the stack trace because that is going to help them ask you the right questions to figure out what went wrong.